Does it matter? Two or one. And so Chelsea, as mentioned, had been improving of late, but this for them is a home loss against Brentford. It does mean that they are in the bottom half of the table at two games now without a win. And ahead of them, well, there is a difficult time ahead of them. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But let's welcome in our former boy in blue in Frank LaBeouf. We'd seen signs of progress recently, Frank. What happened today? Well, many things didn't go well today, that's for sure. The game that they played, the, the lack of pace in, the, in their game, for sure. But they dominated the first half. It was hard. It takes two to tango. I think Brainford didn't want to play uh, offensively, and they were right. You know, they knew that, uh, that what they had to do to make sure that Chelsea couldn't score. They, they played like two lines, 5-5, five, five, and, uh, and didn't allow Chelsea to have too much uh, spaces. But football is full of details, and um, had Sterling would have had that penalty, it would have been a different story, maybe. Uh, Brentford would have to go, uh, uh, to go out and to try to score a goal, and maybe it would have been easier for Chelsea. Having said that, you know, don't try to defend the blue. It wasn't enough to beat Brentford and to be strong enough. The, again, the lack of strikers, the lack of ideas, the lack of pace, again, doesn't allow me to to be too nice to the, to the Blues and to say that they have to work again and they look like a mid-table team. That's it. And then the referee doesn't give it. And I sympathise. You, you see that. Yeah, maybe the referee's thinking is it is a kind of coming together, shoulders and Raheem Sterling goes over easily. But if you're sitting in a VR booth and you have those, those what, two, three angles and you do not see that as a penalty... I, 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 I'm not quite sure what you're doing. And, and again, does it come back to this? And we've seen it, and I, I know Stevie agrees with me because we've said this time and time again, this ridiculous um, notion about um, is it a clear and obvious error? Uh, so the VAR doesn't intervene. I do not know what that means. I, I, it, that it means nothing <laughs> other than let's give the VAR a get-out clause when he makes an absolute mistake. Yeah. And this was an absolute mistake, so I will not be surprised if that's what you hear time and time again um, around this because it, it's, it's bemusing. If there's something else that we are saying time and time again with this Chelsea side, Stevie, particularly with the money that was spent, it's that they're mm. not scoring the goals that they should be. Yeah, they're not, but, you know, listen, we've just been looking at the Classico and, and Aconte Xavi and everybody else. Barcelona were the better side, but when Real Madrid were on top, they scored goals. Mm. We could have been doing the same about Chelsea. I mean, the fact is that when they're on top, they can't score goals. And they had opportunities. You know, they should have had the penalty. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Cucurella should have scored. I mean, a free, a free volley from yeah. six yards. Hits it straight at the keeper. If it goes either side, it's a goal. Sterling had one, he blasts over the bar. Cole Palmer, when it was 1-0, could have got an equaliser. A, a simple... To me, it was a simple cutback, and somehow he almost whiffed on it. So, <laughs> I mean, Chelsea are just finding ways to... To lose games. Uh, but the crux of the matter is, if they had a centre-forward, they could score goals, they would have a lot more points than they actually do. I, I think the, the silver lining, or maybe two in, in, in this case, is that Nkunku, by all accounts, is, is back training, so we'll see how, that, how long it takes him to, to regain fitness, find himself back in the starting lineup, and find form. And I, I, think, I think his presence transforms this team from a, from a goal-scoring goal perspective. We'll see. Um, secondly, and, and I, I thought Chelsea's football over the last couple of weeks has been a whole lot better than we saw in the first half, first half of the season. And so it, it's finally starting to click with Pochettino and this Chelsea team. But, but to that point, I was sitting watching this and thinking how, uh, as I'm watching this game, I'm thinking Chelsea are looking good, you know. I'm, there's, only one winner, there's only one winner here. Mm -hmm. And then more and more as, as the minutes tick by and you know how good Brentford are on the counter-attack, you're just thinking, Chelsea, could, it, but it's still nil-nil. And not only is it still nil-nil, Flecken hasn't really had a save to make. Chelsea have had chances, but put it straight at him. So it's not as though the Brentford keeper is standing on his head and, and keeping him in the game. So Chelsea, are do their football is good, dominating possession, looking comfortable. But then you think, but it's not really tra transforming to nothing. So... 
point being where at least the football is improving, but this Chelsea team still has a long way to go to be where, at, at the very least, the, the money they spent warrants they should be. So there obviously is the hope, obviously, that things could change for Anquan and Kunku does come back, but do they need to go shopping in January for a striker still? Oh, well, I would say yes, because Nkunku is not a real striker. Even if he showed the, the preseason that he could score goals and he's uh, really the guy that everybody is waiting for to be on the field and to, uh, and to, and to score goals. But uh, if they have an opportunity to get a real striker, yeah, go for it, but a real striker. Not somebody who maybe will be a very good striker within five years. Not a real striker from now. That's, that's the key. That's the problem with, uh, with uh, Chelsea. On top of some others, I would say that today, yeah, you can be able to not score goals and misses, uh, missing chances. And the Cucurella chance is crazy how he didn't even give the ball to Madueke to, uh, to score if he's not able to score a goal with his right foot. But the goal they conceded is the mistake between, uh, for first with Cucurella, and then a big mistake between Madueke and Di Sazi at the, second, at the far, uh, far post. And that's it's about communication. It's about covering. It's about everything. And that's his lacking. Crazy. You, if you cannot score goals, at least in that game, you have to draw. You have to keep the clean sheet. Because it's possible. Because it's not complicated. They proved it in the first half, but they let it go the second half. So I agree with the guys, you know, they play better. Uh, maybe they were unlucky, but there are some, some stuff that I see that makes me think that they do everything to not win, and sometimes they do everything to lose the game. And that's really annoying. It might still feel as though there's a long way to go until January as well, when you see the Premier League calendar that's ahead for Chelsea. I mean, it is not easy viewing at all for Blues fans. How bad could it get, Shaka? Um, that, I'm not sure how to answer that in all honesty because I, in so many ways I, Chelsea finishing what 14th last season I think it's as bad as it's going to get so I, I don't think it's going to get worse than that um, it, so they've, they've hit rock bottom if, if you want something to, to smile about um, but it's not going to I, as I say it's not going to get I don't think we see the Chelsea that Again, their spending suggests they were where they should be, uh, but it's a, it's a work in progress. At this point, we, we've said and criticised Chelsea enough about their spending, how they've done it, and, and some, some of the some of these subpar performances. Um, right now, I, I think the only focus for Chelsea and their fans is how they've improved, at the very least, since well, last week or a month ago, or whatever it is. But we, we, at no point are we going to see a Chelsea that... I think, threatens to get into the top four. We, we need to forget that this is not the Abramovich Chelsea. That's, that's the tough part, because we're used to talking about Chelsea as contenders for the title, as top four at the very least. That Chelsea's gone. This is a new Chelsea, and we have to forget mm -hmm. about the old one, because this team is performing like a mid-table side, um, and right now it doesn't look as though anything's going to change.